Hello aviators, welcome back to The Finer Points. In this video, I'm going to bring you along on the very first flight I ever did with a family friend, his name is Isaac, and he's considering flight training, so I really wanted to be the one to give him some foundational knowledge. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On The Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. The beginning of flight training can be totally overwhelming, right? Uh, some people are working at towered airports, there's radios. If you're working through my curriculum, I strongly believe in standard operating procedure and that is not something you can add later. It has to be part of your primacy, part of your foundation. Uh, so the beginning of flight training is, is kind of a tricky balance and as a CFI, what I tend to do with things like standard operating procedure is just demonstrate, right? So at the very least, on that very first flight lesson, I'm demonstrating what's going to need to happen. I'm going, I'm demonstrating the baton that I'm ultimately going to hand off. But in other cases, such as where to look in the airplane and when to look there, we go to work right away on day one. All right, so for every flying problem in an airplane, there's a solution called where do I look and when do I look there? Uh, and it's never too early to start introducing your students to the Lindbergh reference. You'll see here with Isaac and I that I introduce it literally on the first takeoff he ever makes. You're going to do the takeoff today, which is super fun. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm going to help you, yeah. but I don't want you focused inside, so I'm going to show you this integrated method. What I do with early students for the integrated method of instruction is just do that. Yeah. Now, there will be times you want to look at your airspeed. You're allowed to look any time you want. Okay. But this piece of paper will verify that you don't stare at it. Okay. Where you do want to look when we're climbing, you'll hear me call this the Lindbergh reference. Ultimately, I'm going to draw a line right in here when you can't see over the nose. Let your eyes go right here. You'll be able to see everything you want to see. Okay, and I've seen fancier things, you know, designers put fancy things up on the panel or, you know, other people have these little suction cups. If you have a legal pad, skewer a piece of paper on the attitude indicator knob or if you're in the G1000 or some glass panel airplane on your uh, FMS knobs and just allow the student to peek when appropriate. By the way, if it is glass and you have backup instruments, feel free to dim the PFD and simply use the backup instruments. It'll have a similar effect. But the idea is that you want 90% of your student's attention outside and 10% inside. Watch how this very first takeoff for Isaac starts to cement the idea that where he looks when he can't see over the nose is through the Lindbergh reference. This is a non-towered airport, I probably should have mentioned. So yeah. there's no control tower, so we just announce what we're doing to everybody else. Okay. Nevada County traffic, Skyhawk 5218 Foxtrot, uh, departing runway 25, straight out, Nevada County. Good, and we always check the final approach is clear. We don't see any airplanes on final because not everyone makes those radio calls like they should. Right. We always use the whole runway, so just go straight. We're allowed to use this little beginning area, get as close to that white V as you can, and then you're turning back to the left. Nice job. Good, perfect. All right, well, let's just... goes way farther than I thought it did. <laughs> yeah, use them. All right, so let's just stop here for a second. Yeah. One, your left hand goes on the yoke real gentle, like not like an F-16. If you can hold it like this, at the end of the day, it's perfect. Okay. So if you have to for now, grab it. But just so you know, we're not flying like this. We're trying to be as light on the controls as we can. Okay. Your other hand on the throttle. Your feet all the way down on the floor, like balls of your, like your toes on the bottom. Good. And then just go ahead and add full power. Yeah. Okay. Push in all the way. There you go. Good. Nice job. Good. Yep. Keep your hand on the power if you can. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Nice job. Okay. Okay. Oil temp's coming up. Pressure's looking good. All right, I think it feels like it can fly, so gently pull us off the ground. Pull a little more. Just like that, a little more. A little more. Pull more. Pull, 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 pull. There you go. There you go. Nice job. Good. Now, remember what I said. Look through here. Yeah. Can't see anything over the nose, right? Right. But you can see where the horizon is hitting the side of that, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so just hold it there. That's your pitch. Beautiful. Nice job. That pitch is almost perfect, by the way. That's your best rate of climb speed. <laughs> that was great. You're looking good, yeah. We don't do anything until we have a thousand feet under us, right? So just right. keep your hand on the power and yeah. keep flying up till we have about a thousand feet of room to play with if we needed it. Yeah. So cool. 
<laughs> yeah, it's fun, right? So, I don't know how high we are here. I'm going to look. We're f we're not quite a 1,000 yet, so we'll get there. There's like a blizzard warning here today, and uh, this flight I did with Isaac, we had beautiful weather. Today is absolute instrument conditions. We do have an instrument course now available as part of the Ground School app subscription. Everything is included in the subscription, private, instrument, written, oral, check ride prep, better takeoffs and landings. Uh, check it out. There's really, really nothing like it. If you haven't seen it, get a free three-day trial at learnthefinerpoints.com slash ground school. Because this was Isaac's first time in the airplane, I wanted it to be a little bit self-directed. You know, everybody comes in with a different base of knowledge. For example, I wanted to see a stall on my first flight, and it turns out Isaac did too, but it's still a chance to teach the fundamentals. The way I introduce stalls, I use this to kind of teach the Lindbergh reference. Notice in that reference right there, you can see pitch, right? Yeah. You can see roll, uh -huh. and you can see yaw. Right. So you have all the data you need as a pilot. That's why Charles Lindbergh gave up his forward window. Like if you look at the Spirit of St. Louis, the thing that he flew from the, the States to France, yeah. it doesn't have a forward window. Wow. He put a fuel tank in front, and he used a side reference to fly the entire flight. <laughs> I know, right? That's why I call it the Lindbergh reference. Yeah. Right. Anyway, um, so a stall is when you get really slow, like this, very high angle of attack. We don't have a lot of power, and we're asking the wing to do something it can't do. So we hear that little warning, uh -huh. that scream, and then I'll just show you. I'll pitch it into the stall where we'll actually feel the wing stop flying for a moment. Right there. Good. And then we're back to flying. <laughs> That's it. And so go on the controls with me for a moment. Okay. We're going to slowly pitch up and look at your Lindbergh reference. You're looking at your Lindbergh reference because you don't want to yaw. Yeah. If you yaw during a stall, you can spin, and you don't want that to happen. But right here, we're going to pull it into the stall. The wing can't do it. There's the stall. There's the recovery. That's it. It's like a little zero gravity feeling. Yeah, yeah. The main thing about stall recovery is that the recovery is done by releasing the back pressure. So you're pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling, and then you're releasing. That's what recovers it. Okay? Yeah. We'll teach you to add power so you don't lose all this altitude, but it's not power that's recovering it. It's letting the nose down that's recovering it. So I can't emphasize strongly enough how important it is to know where to look and when to look there. A lot of uh, folks don't know this. A lot of CFIs don't teach it. Uh, heck, a lot of CFIs don't know it themselves. So if you don't know these things, make sure you check out our Ground School app. We don't just show you in the video. We actually use tap target evaluations and we make sure that you learn it because we ask you to touch the screen where and when you see it. So if you haven't seen that technology, check it out. And if you're a CFI teaching this stuff, try to work that balance, you know? Uh, demonstrate the kind of pilot that the student will ultimately have to be without throwing it all on them. Uh, but get them in that hot seat from day one and make sure that the zero to 25 hour period has a lot of time spent with the flight instruments covered, tuning into the airplane and learning where to look and when to look there. Hey, if you guys haven't seen it, I was speaking for AOPA down at the Buckeye Fly-In in Arizona, and I put that talk up on the web. Uh, it's available free for everybody at patreon.com slash learntfp if you'd like to check out that talk. It's all about how to be a safer pilot and stay alive in your airplane. All right, you guys, that's all for this video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. Leave a comment below if there's a video you'd like to see. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.